Hello everyone, my name is Ash, and I'm one of the Information Services Library Assistants here at the Warminster Library. Today I'm going to teach you about another awesome resource that you can use on the computer, Linda. Linda is used to access classes and courses that can teach you all different kinds of skills. Creative skills, business skills, and computer skills. So if you're finding yourself struggling using the computer or using things like Microsoft Office, different programs like that, Linda may have a course for you. It's a really great resource, especially in 2020, when a lot of us are trying to connect over the internet and using our computers, and maybe we've never had to do that before. So I really think that it's something that everyone should know about because it may come in handy for them. The first thing that you'll want to do to access Linda is go to the Bucks County Free Library website. That's buckslib.org, O-R-G. And when you come to the Bucks County Free Library homepage, you'll want to go to this blue e-library button. And you'll want to go down to All and then click on All. This page has all of the resources that are available through the Bucks County Free Library. You'll want to scroll down until you find the Linda logo, which is this black and white logo, and you'll just click on that to go to lynda.com. You'll come to the lynda.com login page and it will ask you for your library card and your library PIN. So first you'll want to click in the box under library card number and you'll type in your full library card number, including the letter at the beginning, which usually begins with B, D, or G. And then you'll want to click in the box under library card PIN and type in your four digit PIN. If you don't know your four digit PIN, you can give us a call at the library, or you can come into the library, and we can help you reset it or figure it out. So if you give me one second, I'm just gonna get logged in, and then I'll show you what the Linda homepage looks like. So now that I've logged in, you can see that I'm at the Linda homepage. The Linda homepage has a lot of information on first look, so I understand if it feels like where do I even begin looking at all of this? I'm gonna try and take you through it and make it a little simpler and break it down for you. So the first thing that I want to show you is this middle to bottom section here. Uh, it says new, popular, recommended, and popular at your organization, which would be the Bucks County Library. Uh, if you click on new, you will see all of the newest courses that have been added. If you click on popular, you'll see all of the courses that are popular through all the Linda users, you know, whether they be using Linda through a school or just using Linda on their own or using Linda with our library. This is the section that you'll find those classes that are popular amongst everyone. If you click on recommended, it will show you classes that are recommended specifically for you based on other classes that you have taken previously. And then if you click on popular at your organization, it will show the classes that are most popular with Bucks County Free Library users. So this middle section is really helpful if you're looking for somewhere to start but you're not really sure what specifically you're looking for. Uh, if you're interested in seeing what other skills people are learning, maybe those are skills that you want to learn as well, especially if they're very popular, uh, this is somewhere you may want to start. Above that, if I scroll back up, you'll see popular learning paths. Now, a learning path is a collection of courses that is set up for people who are interested in going into certain jobs or acquiring certain skills. So you see, here is a learning path, become a project manager. And if I put my mouse over it, it says that there's 11 courses in that learning path. So if you're interested in becoming a project manager in your job 
or acquiring more project manager skills, maybe you already are one, that learning path is going to have courses that are all related to that specific job title. If you want to see all of the learning paths, not just the popular ones, at the right corner here, you'll see it says See All, and you can click on that, and it will take you to a list of all of the learning paths that are on Lynda. I think this is really great, especially if you're not sure all of the specific courses related to something. Maybe you want to become a computer programmer, but you don't know the names of all of the most popular programming languages, and you could easily access a learning path that would take you to all of those courses. It really saves time if you know you're looking for something specific. You can see there's really so many learning paths, and they're separated by the different types of industries or topics. So here are all the animation learning paths, really quite a lot of them. Then there's ones related to audio and music, improving your songwriting skills. There's a learning path just for that. Business skills, general IT skills, even marketing skills and photography. Maybe you're interested in getting into photography, whether it be a hobby or maybe you want it to be your job. There's all different learning paths related to that as well. So this is definitely something you could look for. If you know you're going for skills that are related to a certain job or a certain hobby, you can just go right to this and it will just show you exactly the courses that you should be taking on Linda to acquire those skills. Really awesome. So I'm going to go back to the Linda homepage. I'm going to click on the Linda logo at the top left corner of the screen. There's two other things on this page that I haven't shown you yet. There's the continue watching section on the left, you can see here. And these are some courses that I was taking. Uh, and it shows you the percent complete. And then if you click on it, it will take you right back to where you were in the course when you last left the website. There's also my playlists. Now I don't have a playlist, but some people like to create a playlist of different courses. Maybe you went through a learning path and there's some skills that you already have, so you don't want to take those courses, but you add some courses to your own playlist that you can go through. Uh, if that's something you're into, you can definitely do that. And then those playlists would show up here on the left side. So let's say I'm not seeing anything here on the homepage that I want to do. I don't want to continue watching one of the other courses that I've taken. I want to try something new. Uh, there's a couple different ways to search for new courses. The first way, which I really like, is if you go up to this library button next to Linda's logo, you can click on this. And it will take you to all of the subjects for courses available on lynda.com. It's in alphabetical order, so let's say that I wanted to learn some different development skills. I could go to D and click on it, and it would take me right to all of the subjects that start with D, and I could click on development tools, and then it takes me to all of the courses related to using development tools. I can go back and Maybe I'm interested in learning about ebooks. I can click on ebooks and it takes me to all of the courses about ebooks. Some of these are about creating ebooks. That's really cool. So that's one way that you can look for courses. Another way is you can search using the search box. So next to library, to the right, there's this search box up here that says search for the software or skills you want to learn. And you can click in that. Now, let's say I want to learn more about Microsoft Publisher. We use Publisher a lot at the library and maybe I don't know a whole lot about it, so I want to learn. So I will type in Microsoft Publisher and then press enter on my keyboard. And it will take me to a list of results relating to Microsoft Publisher. So some of these you'll see are just specifically individual videos from a course, and some of them are entire courses. 
This one is Learning Publisher 2013. This one is Publisher 2016. So you'll see also that they have courses relating to newer software and sometimes a little bit of older software. When you're looking at courses, you'll also notice that there's a lot of information before you even click on the course. You see that there's the title, there's the name of the course teacher, all of the teachers are professionals in their field that work with Linda to create these courses. So you know that you're getting good information from people who really know what they're talking about. There's also the description here, and if it's a beginner, intermediate, or advanced course. If you're somebody who is completely new to a topic, and you're just getting started, you may not want to take an advanced course. So this is good that they denote that. That way you're not sort of jumping into something that is way above your level that you're not really ready for yet. Next I'm going to show you what a course actually looks like. I'll use this learning publisher course as an example. I'll click on the course and it takes me to the course page. Now in the middle you'll see that there is the first video that you can watch, and you can click on the big triangular play button to start watching the video. On the left side, you'll notice that there is the contents sidebar, and that it splits everything up into little videos based on the topic. So even though we're taking this course and it's only 30 minutes, it's still split up into smaller videos, so you don't have to take the whole 30-minute course right away. And some of the courses are rather long, so I don't know if you would want to take them all in one sitting. This is also good because if you are sort of familiar with a topic, but maybe still kind of a beginner, you might not want to watch the entire course. You might say, oh, I know how to zoom and change the view. I'm going to skip that video, and I'm going to go right to exploring the interface. You can click and flip through the different videos and change which one that you're currently watching, which I think is a really nice feature. Especially because in 2020, some of us are on the computer for long, long periods every day, and we may not want to be on the computer for four hours taking a course. We may just want to get down to the information that we need to get us where we need to go. With Linda, you're able to do this. You're able to learn the most important information to you using the contents. So I think that's awesome. You can also take notes right here on this page. You don't need a notebook. You don't need to use another program. You don't need to get some scratch paper. Uh, next to contents to the right, if you click on notebook, it will open up a little section where you can write notes. When you're done writing your notes, they can be exported to a Word document or a PDF, and then you can print them out. So that's really great. If you go down below the video, you'll see that there is an overview of this course. It goes over the skill level again and the duration. There's also some other buttons next to overview up here. If you click on transcript, it will give you a transcript of this specific video. And if you put your mouse over the words, you can skip to different parts of the video by clicking on the transcript. So that's really great. Maybe you stopped in the middle of one of these videos and you want to get back to where you were. You can just click the spot where you were before. Many of the courses and videos on lynda.com are also closed captioned as well, which is great because that means they're accessible even if you don't have headphones or if you have difficulty hearing. What about if you don't have access to the internet or you know you're going on a trip or something like that and you know you're not going to have access to Wi-Fi? Well, there's a solution for that as well. If you click on view offline, you can download the entire course so that you're able to use it even when you don't have an internet connection. You would just click on this blue start the download button and it would download the course for you. The last button in this section is the Exercise Files button, which is something that I didn't even know about until recently. If you click on Exercise Files, you'll find downloadable files, worksheets, and exercises that you can use to help support your learning. You will just click on the specific file and it will start downloading. There may be one or there may be many. Uh, this one's a zip file, which means that it's a, it's a folder of files, so there's actually many files in this one file you would download. 
The last thing I want to show you is how to change your settings on Linda. At the top right corner, you'll see it says hi and your name with a picture of a person. If you go up there and then you click on my profile, it will take you to a page where you can change your name on file, your email address, and some other information that's stored with Linda. That information is not the same as changing your information with the library, just so you know. So maybe you have all of your library emails go to one email address, but you want emails from Linda to go to another email address. You can do that. That would be under My Profile. You'll also see that under My Profile, there's some other buttons. There's playlists, which would take you to the list of playlists that you've made. History, that's a history of things that you have previously viewed on Linda. Recommended, that's where you can change settings about what recommendations you're getting. Uh, certificates, this is a really awesome section because it will give you certificates of completion for different courses that you could say, hey, okay, I did this course and I learned this skill. And then there's also bookmarks. If you bookmarked different things, they would show up there. And there's log out. Uh, if you're using a public computer or a computer that's shared by other people, you always want to make sure to log out. That way, all your information is kept safe. I hope you enjoyed going through Linda today and learning some new things. I hope you'll try it out at home. And if you have any questions, you can always give us a call at the library. Our number is 267 317 1333. We'd be very, very happy to help you and answer any questions that you may have. You can also contact Linda's customer service. They have a phone number as well 1 888 33 Linda. That's L Y N D A. That's really great if maybe the library is closed but you still need some help, or you have a question very specific to Linda that maybe the library doesn't know the answer to. They're also available to you if you want to reach out to them anytime. Anyway, that's all for today. I hope you have a great day. Bye bye!